Now let's talk about the mapping of view models. So here in our code for saving our profile object, we have this code that maps the view model back and forth between the view model and the entity object in our case, so that we can save it. We did the reverse for when we created a view model inside a repository. Here in the repository, we map to our view model by using simple code, including flattening some of that data. But I'd love to be able to do this in a more centralized way. I hate that this mapping code is stuck in the middle of nowhere. This is where you can use one of a number of different mapping solutions out there. I'm going to talk about AutoMapper, but you may have your own favorite mapping project. Let's go ahead and add it using NuGet. And I'll just go ahead and install it. And the way I use AutoMapper, or really any mapping solution, is I want to configure all the maps in some central place. And we can do this in ASP.NET MVC by handling it at startup. So in our global ASA X file, you can see a number of the registrations for starting up our application. And I'm going to do the same with maps here. And I'm just going to call this mapping config. And I'm just going to create a method on it called register maps that will call when the application starts up. So we can have all of our mapping in some central place. I'm going to create this mapping config by just creating a new class in our app start folder. In our case, this is just going to be a static class, and I'll create a member on it. This is where we'll do all that actual interesting work. The way this works with AutoMapper in specific is that we're going to use the mapper class, and it has a method called initialize, and this is where we can initialize all of our maps. AutoMapper does this specifically so that it can know when all the maps are created and do some work to optimize those maps. And then to create one of these maps, we're just going to use the object that's being passed in called config and call create map. And create map allows us to just specify the two types we're dealing with. And in our case, we want to be able to map from a profile to our random profile view model object. And if we don't have any additional configuration, creating a map is as simple as that. But how do we use it? Now that we've created the map, let's go to a repository where we're actually doing this work. So in Get Random Profiles, we're expecting the random profile, but we're doing it by making a select. We're creating these or doing this mapping directly inside of the link query. Now, if this is the only place we ever need it, this might not be necessary. But let's go ahead and just comment out this piece so I can show you how AutoMapper can help us. Now, in this case, the select isn't working because it's expecting that to be a list of random profile view models. But now, because we've commented out the select, this query is just returning a list of profile objects. So we want to be able to map them back. So let's go ahead and get the random profiles by calling AutoMapper, mapper.map. And here I'm going to give it generic parameters for the two types. In this case, I'm going to say a list of profile, which is going to be the source, and then a list of random profile view models is what I want it to spit back out. And then I'm going to hand it the source, which is our profiles. What this line of code does, it tells it to take that source of this type and pass back in this type. Now remember, we created a map only from profile to random profile view model. But when we do that, AutoMapper specifically creates additional maps, or at least supports maps, that are going to go from collection type. So I enumerable, list, I list, etc. are also going to be supported without us having to worry about the list types. If we go back to the browser, we should see that we're getting the individual people because we can see they're looking for, but we're missing information. We're missing information that should be shown here. All we're getting is the looking for. We're not getting the actual name of the person or, more importantly, the picture. Let's debug this so you can see what this looks like. So the profiles it created, six profiles just like we wanted, and looking for worked, but member name and photo URL didn't. And the reason for this is that when you create a new map, all that creating that new map does is create a map for one-to-one -one properties. For other types of properties like we have, remember we are flattening out the member name as well as doing a query to get the photo URL that we want to use for the random profile. Both of those operations we have to tell the map about. So let's see what that looks like. 
back in the mapping config, there is a fluent syntax. So the object that's being returned by create map allows us to modify the way the mapping happens. And in our case, we're going to say for member. And for member is going to take a couple of parameters. The first is we want to be able to get at the destination member. So we're trying to tell it for what property on the destination, on the random profile view, do we want to do something special for. So we can do that with a lambda. We'll pick member name. And then the next parameter are the options for handling this particular member. And there's a number of options for how to handle this. We can do a number of different things. But for us, we're going to want to actually just say map from. So we're going to tell it where to get this piece of information. So we're going to tell it to map from the source member dot member name. So we're doing that flattening there. We can make a copy of the same operation for our other exceptional, which is the photo. So let's change this, that this is going to be for the photo URL. And then what we're mapping from, instead of being member, is that same operation we were looking at earlier, which is photos first or default, photo is main, and then go ahead and get the URL out of it. And so this is going to allow us to handle those exceptional cases, but allow the library to handle the mundane or the boring cases. I find that this method allows me to centralize these mappings so that if I'm using them over and over and over again, there's a one place that they're happening, but also that I'm not having to write the same code over and over and over again. So we look at this in the browser, we can see it's working again. We're now getting all the information we need. We're getting the photo URL, and we're also getting as the alt, the member name that we're using here. But we have a problem. Over in the repository, the performance characteristics have changed. We used to be doing the select directly in the database query, and therefore it was more efficient. We were only returning the data we needed. And we were letting the database do the hard work of this conversion from one type to another. Because we've moved this after the query, this doesn't really work. But luckily, AutoMapper takes that into account. What we can do here as part of the query is use a method called project. Now project is an extension method, so we're going to need to include automapper.queryable extensions. And then we're just going to say project to and give it a type, that same type we've been dealing with. And then we can simply return these profiles. The difference here is that these profiles will now be of the correct type because we're projecting into our new types but we're relying on the auto mapping to centralize that. We're not sticking it inside the repository. We're sticking it into a central place where anytime we need the mapping, whether it's directly here in the repository or maybe in a controller or maybe in some other place, we have it centralized in one place. So this returns us back to that same performance characteristic, but gives us the power of centralizing all that mapping. Next, let's take these same ideas and apply them to forms instead of just views.